Hi, comrades. Unfortunately, I will be an only speaking, uh, speaker on our, our today commission, but uh, it have uh, some positive point because uh, we will have much time for our discussion. Uh, so I will try to give you some general points about uh, why struggle for democratic rights is very important for working class. And uh, they are say a couple of words about uh, today's world uh, situation and uh, the role of democratic uh, of struggle for democratic rights uh, in it. Uh, Renan, in his famous work, uh, What to be Done, written in uh, 1902. Uh, uh, claimed uh, that uh, working class uh, should be the most advanced and most uh, consistent fighter for democracy. And uh, that struggle will uh, develop the political consciousness and led to unite another oppressed groups of people around the working class. After the beginning of the first Russian revolution in uh, 1905, in his pamphlet, uh, Two Tactics of uh, Social Democracy in Democratic Revolution, he continued to develop his uh, position about uh, workers' fight for democracy. Uh, for instance, he explained uh, that uh, democratic republic is an inevitable first step because uh, first step on the road to the social revolution, uh, because uh, socialists uh, need a maximum maximal democracy to organize hundreds of thousand workers all over Russia and uh, win sympathy to their program among millions of people. He warned uh, that those who look for another way to socialism accept the democratic republic inevitably will make ridiculous or reactionary conclusions. And uh, generally, Lenin was absolutely right, because namely a relatively short period of uh, maximal democracy during the five, first five months of uh, 1917 February revolution in Russia from March till July 1917, let the Bolsheviks spread their agitation and propaganda and uh, gained uh, crucially important position in Soviets and in soldiers' committees. Further, Lenin explained that namely workers, peasants, and another oppressed groups, he named, he named them urban democracy, are interested in making a new republic as much democratic as possible in order to gain uh, their own aims. Redistribution the land, eight hour working day, abolition the landlordism, the monarchy, elimination the national and another kinds of oppression. And uh, this is the point where interests of proletariat clash with the interested, interest, interests of bourgeoisie. If we uh, continue Lenin's thoughts, we will understand that maximal democracy is lucrative for workers, peasants, youth, and uh, different oppressed groups I just asking for longer pauses there just a bit yeah mm -hmm. because they are the majority of the population in today's world but uh, by the same reason bourgeoisie is interested in keeping all kinds of limitation of democracy to keep their own political and economical power as Lenin said bourgeoisie too desperately needs the tsarism with its police, bureaucratic and military might against proletariat and peasantry to seek the abolition of the monarchy. And he constantly demanded uh, the struggle for democracy, not only against the Tsar's regime, but uh, if it need, against uh, the bourgeoisie too. Leon Trotsky in the uh, 1930s developed Lenin thoughts Exp explaining the concrete meaning of democracy for working class. And his book, What's Next? Little Questions 
uh, for the German proletariat, he wrote, in the course of many decades, the workers have built up within the bourgeois democracy. By utilizing it, by fighting against it, their own strongholds and basis of proletarian democracy, the trade unions, the political parties, the educational and sport clubs, the cooperatives, etc. The proletariat cannot obtain power within the formal limits of bourgeois democracy, but can do so only by taking the road of revolution. This has been proved both by theory and experience. And these uh, bulwarks of workers' democracy within the bourgeois state are absolutely essential for taking the revolutionary road. The point of departure in the struggle against fascism is not the abstraction of the democratic state, but the living organization of the proletariat in which is concentrated all its past experience and which prepare it for the future. So even from this brief review, we can see that Marxists uh, always fight not for democracy as abstract principle, democracy itself, but for concrete elements of workers' democracy in the bourgeois society, which give for, for working class uh, the most possible space to organize for the class struggle. And uh, looking on today's world, it's easy to notice uh, that uh, many ideas of Marxist of the beginning of uh, 20th century or 1920s or 1930s are relevant till now. Our comrades uh, many times uh, pointed out in discussions that the uh, situation in today's world uh, has many common features with the world situation in 1930s. Except uh, some short uh, respites, uh, world capitalism after 2008 is in the deepest crisis uh, since 1929. Saving their pr profit, capitalists and uh, their governments implemented one by one new packages of austerity measures, cut social budgets, reduce workplaces and uh, destroy the environment. Of course, uh, such kind of policy provocates uh, the backfire from the different layers of working class, like women or youth and another oppressed groups. I have no time to list all mass movements and uprisings in the world for last 10 years. From general strike in Europe to uprising in the Middle East, North Africa, Latin America, Hong Kong, or BLM and anti-Trump movement in the USA. And it uh, in turn generates uh, the situation when, as Leon Trotsky figuratively said, faced with the high voltage of social and class contradictions, fuses of democracy burn out. So in one degree or another, governments around the world have the growing tendency towards authoritarianism. And uh, if we keep in mind uh, Lenin's explanation, it will be easy to draw a correct analogy. A weak Russian bourgeoisie desperately needed Tsarist regime. Modern bourgeoisie needs uh, so-called uh, deep state. The same by Lenin's words, police, bureaucratic and military might with the same aim against proletariat. In a period of world crisis, bourgeoisie has uh, neither resources, nor wishes to make concessions for masses. And uh, in such a situation, the last reserve is uh, repressive measures. In final analysis, all such repressive measures from that taken peaceful demonstration by armed riot police to implementing the censorship or its element on internet, etc., have the aim to prevent masses uh, involvement in policy. And by that reason, we should know we should never support 
any emergency and so-called anti-terroristic measures. As Trotsky warned, any restriction to democracy in bourgeois society is eventually directed against the proletariat. Any workers leader who arms the bourgeois state with special means to control public opinion in general and the press in particular is a traitor. Of course, uh, the working class should, should fight against his enemies like right, right populists or fascists, but with its own methods by white agitation and propaganda, mass mobilization, strikes, etc. Not relying on repressive machine of bourgeois state, but uh, having many common features with the situation of 1930s, today's uh, world situation has one important difference. Class consciousness today is much lower than it was in period of Lenin and Trotsky. If uh, in 1930s there was still a stamp of October Revolution on the events of the world and uh, existed uh, militant mass workers organizations with uh, millions of members, today we still deal with uh, consequences of collapse of Stalinism lack of organizations or degeneration of organizations from previous period. And uh, this make our task more difficult. As we pointed out many times, in period of crisis, masses will continue to fight in any case. But in situation of lack of uh, lack of workers organizations, or when they are inactive, any mass movement almost inevitably fall under the influence of one or another bourgeois force. Especially in dictatorial or semi-dictatorial regimes, when part of bourgeois class decided, decides uh, uh, that uh, authoritarianism is too spicy dish, and uh, doesn't give them enough, pro enough profit, they can begin to fight against the dictatorship pretended uh, to be fighters for democracy. But uh, by the reasons I described uh, above, their struggle will always uh, have very uh, half-hearted character. They always bet on atomized and spontaneous activity of masses to remove the top layer of previous regime, but leave uh, its basis, the capitalism, untouchable. Now, for instance, in East Europe, in the last couple of decades, uh, we had many so-called colored revolutions. When mass uprisings destroyed Bonapartistic or authoritarian regimes, which later were replaced with one or another combinations of former oppositional bourgeois parties. And uh, democracy was restored, at least in words. But as a rule, it is still very limited democracy, where masses of workers, women and youth have no their own voice. To illustrate this, we can look at any parliament after colored revolutions. For example, Ukrainian after revolution of dignity in 2014 or Kyrgyzian after popular uprising last year. They consist of another combination of previous bourgeois and bureaucratic groups and clans. And uh, the same thing we see now in Russia in movement around Alexei Navalny, who of course is very bold critic of Russian authoritarian regime, but criticizing the corruption of to top layer of state apparatus and narrow circle of uh, super rich Russian billionaires oligarchs and calling to fight against them. He of course has never explained 
that such a situation is a direct consequence of restoration of capitalism and former USSR in 1990s. His beautiful Russia of the future is something like ideal democratic bourgeois state that can't exist in modern world full of inter-imperialistic and social and class contradictions. But it doesn't mean that uh, we shouldn't take part in mass democratic movement. On the contrary, we should be very active in such movements because even in Russia today, process of uh, struggle for democracy clearly moves to the left. And its base today is discontent and tiredness of mass with endless crisis and decline in standards of, of living, which today are in glaring contrast with uh, luxury lifestyle of top figures in state apparatus and their close friends oligarch. And our task in such movements, even with our small forces, is to be an alternative pole of gravity for the most advanced layers of workers and youth who are now involved in mass movements and begin to look for political expression for their aspirations. The means we have to complete this task are our media, our program, our agitation and propaganda. By Lenin words, we should passionately explain why democracy that demanded uh, bourgeois politicians is very limited and why we should go further than even most radical bourgeois democrats demand. In Russia and Belarus, for instance, we explain and uh, that we explain the, that point counterposting bourgeois idea of coordination council of opposition consisting of all kinds of bourgeois politicians with one or two inactive representatives uh, of trade union, trade unions. And our slogan of uh, constitutional assembly, democratically elected from all layers of labor people, because only such organ can uh, fulfill demands of ordinary people, abolish all repress repressive laws, stop budget cuts and redistribute the wills of society in favor of working class. But to convince such an assembly, we need to build again new mass organization of working class. Now, to make a conclusion, our fight for democracy is uh, as earlier and inextricably linked with fight for socialism and building the instruments and struggle for as wider as possible space for such struggle. Thank you.